I like the like, came from a kind of family where and you wake up on a Saturday morning, if you are not cleaning the bathroom, you've got there's nothing for you to be like you have to be up either cleaning the bathroom or cooking. I hated it. I actually hated getting up in the morning that early and cleaning the bathroom. So it was from then on that I was like, either I get a job or I'm gonna study hard. Coming out of college with three A's, I just wasn't there was nobody to advise me, oh Lorraine, yeah. you can go to like a Red Brick University or a Russell League University or yeah. Oxbridge. There was nobody to tell me that. When people were in the library, I was selling stuff. Okay. So like <laughs> I would go to like Costco's and go and buy yeah. sweets and snacks and like stand outside the library. I remember getting a phone call. And that phone call, like it was a private number, I answered it. And they're like, um, hi, is this Lorraine? I'm like, yeah, it's Lorraine. They're like, oh, this is so-and-so from the X Factor. Mm -hmm. I'm like, X Oh, wow. So I said, look, I'm going to try it. So I went out there for two months. <laughs> that two months turned into almost four years. But that was one of the best times of my career. Why? Yeah. Because I was out of my comfort zone. Mm. And when you're out of your comfort zone, that's when you're kind of forced to actually do more. For me, I got to a point where, look, it was now or never, mm. right? I'm going to try and work on the side hustles and also yeah. just have time for myself. Okay, so you um, so you got MBE. What was, the, what was the MBE for? Welcome to the Takeoff Experience where I sit down with highly driven people to talk about their journey, their failures and their successes. If you want to take off in your career, your business, your finances, or your mindset, then this podcast is for you. Welcome back to the Takeoff Experience. We have a very, very, very special guest in the building, Lorraine. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, very, very good to have you here. I'm actually trying to, I think I remember why I wanted you, because I saw you on, I think it might be in the UK Black Business Week. I wasn't there for your show, but mm. I saw you on Instagram. I was like, okay, mm. it's interesting. You, okay. Sit, call yourself the chief side hustler yeah. okay cool i have to have you um on the podcast and you're going, going to ghana very soon right I am. yeah i guess by the time this podcast is out i'm gonna yeah. be there so <laughs> what, what's up in ghana what's happening there ghana do a few different things yep. so ghana's my hometown mm -hmm. love ghana you know um i've got a beauty salon out in ghana called leona nails it's in laboni in a crowd anybody's out there do holler mm -hmm. at me um, I also have done and started a couple of like businesses and they just basically flopped. Um, but I also have Agritech startup there as well. Okay. We deal in, um, you know, trading commodities for people that want to invest in farming. Yeah. Um, so we do that on their behalf. And, you know, I just help in terms of people that are in the diaspora that want to just involve, get themselves involved in Ghana. So yeah. I act as a coach, as a mentor for them as well. There's a few different things that I do in Ghana. Why Ghana though? It's my Even home. though you're in the UK. I Look, know. Ghana <laughs> is like, you know, a passion for me. Yeah. I was born in the UK, bred in the UK, but my parents mm -hmm. um, are from Ghana. They came over to okay. the UK. They came over from to the UK like, you know, very early. Mm. And but they've always tried to keep me quite connected to Ghana. Okay. So um like in 2019 was the year of return for Ghana, but I always say my year of return was like 2012. Okay. So I was going back. Those are times when I was like away from the parents, traveling by myself with my friends, mm -hmm. heading out there. And yeah, that's when I started to discover, wow, wow this is actually Ghana. Like yeah. nowadays, everyone's going for the party and mm -hmm. et cetera. But I was going very early I on. I know. I feel like it's the wrong reason to go you know? there for, right? Partying. There Seriously, is that all? I mean, it's like the new there. Miami. Like yeah. literally, those days when we were going to Miami, people are now going, like, that's <laughs> over now. People yeah. are now going to Ghana. <laughs> That is a place to go. Yeah, I mean, I think DLT they've got uh, they've yeah, got two yeah, events: yeah. Nigeria, Lagos, and I think Accra, Accra as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. whereabouts in Ghana are your family from? Um, so just out of Accra mm -hmm. is a place called Abri, which okay. is also a very hot spot for a lot of people nowadays okay. as well. So that's where my parents come from. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, well, my mum comes from Abri, my dad comes from like the Kumasi area. Okay, okay. What's it What's it like in those areas? I know nothing about Ghana. So. Do you know what Abri yeah. is like? It's now becoming one of those up and coming places mm -hmm. where you've got like people that are, because it's on a mountain, like yeah. the weather is like cooler than being in Accra, where okay. it's really humid. A breeze got like views for days. It's just like, it's the place right now that people yeah. are trying to get to. And buying land in in a, in a breeze right now, you're not going to pay anything less than like $50,000 for a piece of land out there. Really? Right now. It's like, yeah. It's, it's expensive. Hot it's hot oh, cake. gosh, gosh. Uh, are you trying to build? something out there like well, that or yeah but not in that area okay. why it's too expensive <laughs> yeah yeah you won't, but we'll get there get the growth. we'll get there <laughs> okay. we've got a target we've just been talking about our target 27 billion we'll yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll <be happy>. <laughs> <laughs> mad mad yeah. mad and um so so obviously your parents moved here you said yeah um 
and you were also born here as I well, right? Here, yeah. yeah. What was what were you like in school? I think I watched a video and you said you were a straight A student, right? Mm-hmm. In college. Yeah. Were you was that because you love studying? Do you know what? Yeah. I yeah. came from a like a single parent household. Mm-hmm. Um my dad was really he was involved, mm-hmm. but obviously I weren't living with him. Um I grew up in a council estate in Tulse Hill, close to Brixton, okay. South London. Southwest, yeah. There you go. And um I like that came from a kind of family where and you wake up on a Saturday morning, if you are not cleaning the bathroom, you've got, there's nothing for you to be, like, you have to be up either cleaning the bathroom or cooking, right? Okay. And because, like, that was my chore. So at nine o'clock, if you're still in bed, there's no reason for you still to be in bed at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning. And you know what? I was actually so, like, I hated it. I actually hated getting up in the morning that early and cleaning the bathroom. So it was from then on that I was like, either I get a job or I'm going to study hard. Okay. Just because if I'm studying, my mm. mom ain't going to force me to clean the bathroom. Okay. So that's where I guess I started to get like more, like, I just don't want to clean. That was just yeah. me. But um, eventually I just got into it and um, started studying. But I came from a family that was also very much like my mom always wanted, it was education like mm-hmm. they place an importance on it and as a yeah. Ghanaian I'm sure the same from Nigerians yeah they even want you to be a lawyer doctor yeah or engineer yeah you know? and you're kind of like coerced into those spaces mm-hmm. so yeah that's mad that's mad it's, it's crazy that you're talking about upbringing it gives me a bit of reflection mm. on my upbringing um so I, I know you said that you didn't like that but do you reflecting back on it looking back on it do you think that was kind of useful for it was you necessary to, yeah it was necessary as an old as a woman now like you need to have those core skills like okay we're not going to get deep into the whole kind of mm. equality or feminist or whatever yeah. but as a woman to take care of your household it's a it feels it's, it's pride yeah. like you know as a woman you feel good when you can take care of your house yeah and to be able to cook as well, and the bonus, <laughs> you know. But at a young yeah. age, at like 12, 13, 14, yeah. you don't care about those yeah. things. Your mom's forcing you in the kitchen. Your mom's forcing you to the bathroom to go and clean. But you don't realize those things until later on, yeah. how, valued, how valuable they are. Yeah, mad, you know? mad, mad. And w- when was your first job? When did you get your first job? Do you 16. remember? 16. 16, what was 16. it? 16, I worked for Mother Care. Mother Care, okay. Yeah, do you remember Mother Care? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Some people I remember, remember, I, Mother I Care. remember even Woolworths. Woolworths, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah Woolworths. Now, I remember like being dragged down Clapham High Street in South London by my mum with my CV. And she took me from shop to shop to shop to shop. She said, go, if you ain't going to be cleaning at home, you need to be <laughs> doing some kind of job. So she literally took me That's by the crazy. arm and like dragged me down. And then, yeah, handed my CV in that mother care. And they called me back and I got a job. And yeah, I managed to get to like supervise at the age of like 17. Wow. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. How long were you working in there at Mothercare for? I did Mothercare for two years before yeah. um went off to uni and then okay. started working for H&M. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you just did retail for a bit. I remember yeah. I did retail. I did Primark. I did shoe. Okay. I did a toy shop. Yeah, I'm a hustler why, too. Why was Primark? Why are the lines? Like, what happened? Did they not have enough people on the, on the queues? Have like, you seen how yeah, big like, Primark is? Sorry tours. about that. <laughs> That's mum. <Yeah. laughs> I'm going to have to. Um, Primark is massive. That's mm. the thing, right? Like, and they why were... not high enough people for the tills? Why is it always a big line? <laughs> I don't understand. You know what? I don't know. I never know. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that. But I think the job wasn't great, is mm. the truth. Um, you literally, I, I could tell you a day, like it, it will close late, like 10. Yeah. You'll be maybe folding up clothes like 10 minutes before 10. Somebody is just come and rough Mess it up. It up. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very frustrating. Yeah. Close area. People didn't respect it because yeah. I think because the clothes were cheap. Mm. So people just didn't respect it. Whereas if you go to Selfridge, people don't even, yeah, they, they wouldn't even never touch dare. if they can't yeah, afford yeah, it, right? So yeah. I think in Primark, it just had a, a huge churn. Mm. I mean, I lasted probably a couple months oh for real yeah yeah i wasn't okay, yeah i didn't like okay, it no okay. i didn't like it. i couldn't do it so yeah. no retail nah. is tough it is but tough it gives you it, it literally it gives you that that foundation you need to go on exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah you know i got the customer service skills that's i got it. the sales skills that's so it. yeah I, I can't fault it yeah. it definitely helped me it gave me a bit of a foundation so okay so you so you worked at h&m mm. you studied what did you study at college actually what was um, it at you college doing? i studied um so for a levels mm. i did it sociology film studies and music tech how did you get away with that <laughs> what do you mean how did i get away with it like, like you weren't told oh you need to do law or bio, I, like biology chemistry i didn't really have 
anybody yeah. to guide me. Okay. Do you get it? There was yeah. like nobody to guide me those times into, okay, okay. these are the kind of things. Mm. The only thing that I believe I picked correctly was IT because I okay. knew the future was tech. Yeah. I knew that was where things were going to yeah, go. Yeah, 100%, yeah. You know, so I always like from from you, from school, I was doing GCSE IT. Okay. Like college, I did oh, wow. IT. Uni, I did IT. Wow. You did know? you actually like it though? I didn't, no. Oh, <laughs> you, didn't like, you didn't like it when you just but I it. just had to do it because I knew okay. like the future was, the future yeah. was tech. Okay, you know? and then, okay, so college, you did that, mm. straight A's. Mm. What was the college again that you went to? Richmond upon Tem College. Rich, okay, that's a really good, that's a really <laughs> good college. Yeah, I loved it. And you, you mentioned something about like uni, like deciding what uni you went through. Can you talk mm. us through that? Like what, what was the thinking yeah. behind that? Um, so... I ended up going to Brunel mm. University and Brunel since then has just churned out a number of like amazing creatives, which yeah. I'm super proud about. Um, but at the time, look, I got three A's at A levels mm. and Brunel, let's be honest, it was kind of, it's like, it's a, it's not a red brick university, mm. right? It's not a Russell League University. It's not an Oxbridge. And coming out of college with three A's, I just wasn't, there was nobody to advise me, oh, Lorraine, yeah. you can go to like a Red Brick University or a Russell League University or yeah. Oxbridge. There was nobody to tell me that. Mm. And because of the color of my skin, because I just didn't have the self-confidence, yeah. I didn't even apply to those really? universities. Okay. Because I didn't even know it was accessible to me. Yeah. You know? And and those times, three A's were to the top. I think now now it's A star, right? Yeah. But those times, it's, it's A's at the top. So I got those, but... I was also, I went to Richmond and Richmond was a highly sociable college. Yeah. And a lot of them were going to Brunel. So okay. I actually just said, look, I'm going to go Brunel just so mm. I can still be around people. Yeah. And that was literally my rationale. Okay. But there was a second rationale because mm. I knew they also did sandwich courses. Mm. And I knew to get myself ahead of the game, getting work experience was important. Yeah. So not only did Brunel have like the social element, mm -hmm. it also had the ability for me to kind of like, do a year yeah. out and, and do that work alongside that's so interesting and I, I was thinking about this as well right because obviously I, I grew up in Campbell right and mm, I know okay. that there was a lot of distractions in the mm. area even when I was studying there was a lot of police sirens bottles mm -hmm. breaking all this craziness right how did you focus living in, were you still living in Tulsa Hill around this time um I moved to college like okay. so I moved on campus okay at you uni moved. yeah okay so but I'm... before that how did you focus because you got three three A's which is yeah exceptional. but I think it was like my upbringing yeah. right I yeah, you. Would, I mean, as a child, you will sneak out and you're like, you know, you go and do all those things that yeah. you, before you just come back before your mom yeah. comes back, gets back in, right? Yeah. But yeah, there were distractions. Mm. I grew up in an area where all the well, half the guys were in prison or mm. like going to prison, and half the girls were, mm. you know, like I'll leave the rest to the imagination. But mm. there was just a lot going on, mm. you know, and to break that cycle, um, it took a lot. Okay. Right, and I think that's credit to my mum. Yeah. Um, credit to God as well, like just taking us out of that cycle. Because mm -hmm. my sister did well, my brother did well. Yeah. You know, so. And that's not by accident. That's, that's not by, by design. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. You get me? Because we could have mm. easily been swallowed up into that cycle, mm. like easily, because yeah. we're living left and right and across the road from somebody that's getting shot or police like yeah. knocking down doors or whatever it may be, like you said in Camberwell. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, wow, wow, that's cool, that's cool. I'm, I'm glad it worked out. And so am I. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Would you ever go back to Tulsa? I mean, just you walk there. I mean, no, it's but probably it's a little bit different. Right? Now. Yeah, it's that's gentrified. The thing. It's different. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Tulsa is like on a doorstep to Brixton. Yeah. So if you can't afford Brixton, you're, you're just move. you're edging into Tulsa Hill <laughs> because Brixton, I was priced out of Brixton very yeah. early on. I could yeah. have gone into Brixton. I should yeah. have gone into Brixton. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. I mean, Brixton is like, what is it? Is it tech? Is it zone two? It's own two, it's but own I'm two, like, right? those times I should have been there, but now. I mean, we didn't think about it like that back it. then we in didn't. zones, right? So yeah, it was a ghetto, I suppose. <laughs> um, okay, so you went to uni, you studied, what was Information it? Information systems. Information systems, yeah. another subject you didn't like. Mm. Graduated the first, I believe. What was what was the uni experience like? Oh, like, uni how, was, was amazing. Like yeah? <laughs> uni was great. Yeah. Um, so obviously um, I went because there was a lot of people that I already knew going from college um and but i got involved i got yeah. heavily involved in everything that's going on, on campus from acs mm -hmm. which i absolutely love so i was the liaison officer for acs yeah. um i joined like entrepreneurship society joined all those societies mm. and 
Um, but that's where I started to get my passion for business. Okay. Yeah. And when people were in the library, I was selling stuff. Okay. So like <laughs> I would go to like Costco's and go and buy yeah. sweets and snacks and like stand outside the library. Literally was shopping <laughs> actually trolley. Doing this at uni. Like literally was Mad. shopping trolley and I was like selling snacks out, yeah. like, out of the library. And then um, I was like selling phone cases and everything like phone cases around campus. Wow. I was like doing it. They didn't you stop know? you. To be no. fair, there's nobody really on campus anyway. The t your teachers, they go to the lectures and that's it. And they go home. Yes, so nobody's really stopping you. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing, you're, you're left to your own devices. And obviously because we're an entrepreneurship society, we're trying to show them that, yeah. you know, start business. <laughs> so yes. why not? Start selling you know, something on the campus, bad. <laughs> so I was doing that. And, um, but studying combined with all the societies that I was doing, mm. um, I also discovered that I had dyslexia. Okay. Um, just through studying, I was finding like, why am I struggling like to absorb information? Mm. And I got tested and they told me I had dyslexia. Okay. But I took that upon myself to just make the most of it mm -hmm. and then use that to get extra time in exams. Okay. And then, yeah. That, that, helped, that helped out, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that helped to win. To be fair, they should have, I mean, <laughs> the fact that you were able to get like triple A at college, mm. even with that, without knowing that. I don't know why they don't test for that. Yeah. Like, younger. Yeah. You know? I don't know why, but... Yeah. I don't know. And it could also be mm. a product of the amount of information that your brain mm. is trying to absorb and things yeah. like that. It could, I don't know what it yeah. is, but um, <laughs> I just, it just helps me. Yeah. Because when people are getting up from the exams, I'm still sitting there <laughs> writing. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay. And I think one of your side hustles was actually born at uni. Yeah. Is that correct? Which yeah, one was that? Yeah, yeah. University Gospel Choir. Okay. Yeah. Talk, talk us through that. Yeah, so another society that I was part mm. of on campus was a gospel choir. And okay. I absolutely, look, one of my passions, when I was a child, mm. one of my dreams was to become a singer. Okay, like, you, you I, can sing, right? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's why uh, uh, being part of a choir works. Yeah. Because when you can't sing, no one's going to hear you. you. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Fair know enough. what I'm saying? <laughs> so I wanted to be like in Destiny Child. Yeah. I grew up watching Destiny okay. Child and everything like that. Yeah. And I grew up watching like the TV talent shows, yeah. seeing Leona Lewis, seeing all those people, Alexandra Burke on TV. And I'm like, yeah. wow, I want to be one of them. Yeah. But I couldn't sing. Okay. So the next best thing was a choir, right? Because I enjoy it, but I still want to sing. Yeah. And so I joined my gospel choir at university. And I, look, I'm a Christian, so mm -hmm. I love gospel music. Um, and I just found it so fascinating that you can be forming these mutual bonds of encouragement and community yeah. on campus by singing in a choir. I love it. And um, I was on campus and there was one day, one Christmas time, like I was watching my favorite movie on TV, Sister Act 2, which I absolutely yeah, love that Sister, movie. Yeah, like yeah. it's a classic. Yeah. And I remember watching it and I remember seeing Lauren Hill and Whoopi Goldberg and they took this choir out to do this competition. And they end up winning. I was like, wow, there's nothing like this here in the UK. Yeah, no, we definitely, not that, no. So yeah. let's get something like that started where it's like a fuse between a TV talent show meets university choirs type mm -hmm. competition. And it started it. So from uni, yeah. I started just speaking to other universities, other choirs, and they were like, yeah, we want to get involved. And wow. from then we just started. So where was this Where was this talent show being hosted? Was it hosted at your uni? No, nah, we actually, or? like the vision that I was given, the mm. vision that was laid on my heart was actually to hold it. The first one we did was ever was mm. held in the West End Theatre. Really? Yeah, we wow. went, we just, we went straight, like wow. to West End Theatre, Central London. That's crazy. Yeah. And were like, out people outside of uni allowed to come in yeah that's okay. what it was about like the whole okay. idea of it was yeah. for people from all walks of life mm. to experience the uplifting okay like music or gospel music that, wow that really what it provides that's amazing mm. is that still going on still right going now? we're yeah. 10 years in oh my yeah, gosh 10 years, ten years in. in and is it just in the uk now is it anywhere else we have done it in ghana okay as well, oh that is from. so dope. yeah we've done it in ghana which um yeah their talent is crazy in yeah. Ghana. and yeah we're looking to expand into other regions wow. but we just need the support it's not okay. it's not easy so i'm always yeah look out for it's never it is never easy i feel like to start your own thing without like a huge backing from somebody mm. or people to support That's i just right. don't you know i think sometimes people don't realize like the power of sharing. That's like it. if hundred people share, you yeah. know more than hundred people. If they shared, yeah. that's can that's almost it. go viral, right? Yeah. Um, wow, that sounds epic. What's the plan for the next ten years for it? Yeah, for us now, we wanna make sure it's televised. Okay. Right? We wanna work with partners across social media media platforms or streaming platforms. 
um, and get it out there as much as possible. Yeah. Take it across the world, you know, and have it the same way you've got a Britain's Got Talent, The Voice, whatever. Mm. We want to have it on that kind of level. You I was going to ask, why? Why haven't you gone on there? Is there, just, is there a reason? We, we have. Oh, you have? In a roundabout way. Okay. What's a roundabout so, way? So, um, four years into running University Gospel Choir of the Year, yeah. or UGCY, what we call it. Yeah. I remember getting a phone call. And that phone call, like, it was a private number. I answered it. And they're like, um, hi, is this Lorraine? I'm like, yeah, it's Lorraine. They're like, oh, this is so-and-so from the X Factor. Mm -hmm. I'm like, X who? Oh, wow. And they're like, yeah, we've been seeing your stuff. And I'm like, where have you been seeing our stuff? Because it's on YouTube, but, like, on YouTube, we've only got, like, eight views. And mm. most of the time, those views are from me because I'm just watching it back. <laughs> so I'm like, who on earth is watching? Who yeah. else is watching this? And they're like, yeah, we saw your stuff on YouTube. We've been seeing you, you work with choirs and stuff. I was like, yeah. So they were at the time, these times like Little Mix or um, One Direction, they mm. were on um, X Factor and they needed like gospel choirs to back them. Right. So they were calling me to try and get some of my singers to come and back their contestants on TV. Mm, and since right. then, for the last however many years, every year mm. we provide backing vocalists for X Factor, Brain's Got Talent right. and The Voice. Still to the, Still till to the, the day. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. what's that like? What's that experience It's amazing like? because, look, yeah. remember my dream. My dream yeah. was to become a singer. Yeah. But because I can't sing, mm. giving the opportunity to other people mm. has just satisfied my heart. Yeah. Because giving people the opportunity who have the voice mm. and they, they, they want to have a platform. Yeah. It's just like, for me, it's just amazing that I can provide the opportunity for other people. Wow. That's crazy. Have you met Simon Cow? Yeah. We went to Simon Cow's house. Did you? Yeah. Wow, what so, was it like? <laughs> um, what Christmas was this? I think this was like 2018 yeah. Christmas. They were doing that. They needed, they were doing a TV ad, mm. TV commercial. So they called upon my choir to come to his house and we did a commercial mm. for him. Yeah, with 40 him. minute house? Or Sorry? What was it like a 40 minute house? It, I don't even know how much I, it is. I'm just guessing. I, 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 I mean, it was in in West London. It okay. Was a nice it's going to be expensive. So, yeah. yeah. Mansion yeah. size or just? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. I think I can imagine how much it would be. Yeah. I imagine, mad, yeah. mad. You see, you know, seeing something like that, did you feel inspired? I, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was inspired, but there's so much more we can do. Like, yeah. One of my dreams is to meet like J Hard and like work with her and like yeah. other people. You know, so yeah. it's like there's other things out there that are still inspiring us to yeah. just keep going. Yeah. I love that. Wow, that's crazy. And that's just one of a number of side <laughs> hustles. But well, before we go to the side hustles, let's let's go back to the career. So were you you were doing this at uni, you started uni, then you you graduated. Mm. Um I can't remember now what was your first you were doing an internship, right? During yeah. uni. Yeah, so I chose I believe, uni right? because okay. I chose that uni because I yeah. wanted to do an internship. Yeah. So whilst I was at uni, I did an internship with Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. And then um typically like a sandwich course would run or sandwich placement would run from like um june to like june mm -hmm. so i finished in june but i was like what am i gonna, like we don't start back at uni till september yeah. what am i gonna do so i found another job mm. and i found that with accenture a yeah. management consultancy company yeah. and i did a summer internship with them and so we would like from july to september i was working mm -hmm. with them but they managed to they got me um i managed to get a graduate position with them yeah so when i finished graduating mm. I had a job with them. Yeah. So, um, but at that time it got deferred. So um, when I finished, it got deferred. So I ended up doing some other things. I went out to the States. Mm -hmm. I worked in the States for a year. Yeah, Chicago, Chicago right? Chicago, which I yeah, loved. Yeah. Most amazing experience. Yeah. I like, loved it. And then came back to the UK, started with Accenture. Did mm -hmm. that for like about a year. Actually, it was two years officially. Mm -hmm. But one of those years, um, I was actually working with a client that later became my employer. Okay. So I was working for UBS, the investment mm -hmm. bank. Um, and then they were my client as an Accenture consultant. Okay. Is and that how you got that's into? That's how I got into UBS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So people always ask me, how do you get into investment banking? Mm. I'm just like, I worked for a management consultancy company and mm. I got poached literally. Yeah. You know, Because so you did a good job for, for Exactly, the okay. for the client. Cool. And then they were like, why don't you come on board and work internally? And mm. I was like, yeah. <laughs> they dangled some massive carrot and I was like, see ya. I can show you. <laughs> and then, hey, just stay there that's crazy and when you when you got um into so so i know you i remember you saying you started as an analyst right mm. in accenture and then you worked your way up to what level was it Dire um in accenture i worked yeah. up to management consultants management consultant 
right? And then UBS was one of your clients. Were you only just doing like investment banking? No, it was actually oh. more like so obviously because I'd always been yeah. um always been in tech. Yeah. So um it was more like IT mm. tech stuff, project management, okay. that kind of area. Yeah. So that's what I was doing with Accenture. Mm -hmm. And then end up doing that with UBS as well. Okay. So there was a like a large IT transformation project they yeah. were doing, and I was on that. Okay, and you did you smashed it obviously, and they were like, okay, cool. Mm. We wanna we wanna approach you to UBS, and then you said that you got up to director right at mm. the age of twenty seven. Was that still down the project management route yeah. that you were going up? Yeah, wow. it was. That's it crazy. Was. Talk me through how that happened. How yeah, did it happen? look, so working for UBS, I came in, so I'd finished Accenture as a management consultant. Yeah. And I came into UBS as an associate director. Mm -hmm. So you're almost like, when you left, you're kind of going up this trajectory, right? Yeah. And then working at UBS, there was one time when they'd asked me to go out and work in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to Switzerland. Switzerland. Like, I'm not Wait, going to Switzerland. That's where, that's, that's where their head, company, yeah, their right? head office yeah. is in Switzerland. I was cool. like, I'm not going to Switzerland. And they were asking me, why, why, why? In my head, I'm like, <laughs> Ain't nowhere that I'm gonna be able to get my hair done. <laughs> that was literally my reason for That's your only, That's only reason. Only reason. <laughs> you know? But they kept asking me, and I'm yeah. glad they kept asking me yeah. because do you know what? There's something about like you have to be able to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Like be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I was there thinking I'm not gonna know the language because they speak German, Swiss German. I'm not gonna know anyone, etc. I'm going by myself. So I said, look, I'm gonna try it. So I went out there for two months. <laughs> That two months turned into almost four years. But that was one of the best times of my career. Why? Yeah. Because I was out of my comfort zone. Mm. And when you're out of your comfort zone, that's when you're kind of forced to actually do more. Mm. Like you're actually forced to like showcase your talents, forced mm. to like make those connections and form those connections mm -hmm. and, you know, demonstrate your abilities and your skills. Yeah. And that was a time where I was actually promoted to director. Okay. You know, right. so I was able to learn the culture Mm -hmm. learn like swiss people when they walk into a lift you say hi to the people in the lift okay really when that's, you that's what it is you like. know when okay. you when you um at your, you know during the weekends you go to your colleague's house you go skiing with them you play the game really you know and i learned how to play that game okay there's a corporate game to be played yeah right and you go for aperos you go and you know meet different people and network and go mm. for lunch and lunches in switzerland aren't just an hour they're like an hour and a half two hours and there's certain things that you don't do. You don't book meet and meetings over people's lunch breaks. So I learned all of those kind of mm. like subtle things that you had to be able to do to get by in Switzerland. Yeah. And it was there where I believe my manager, my MD at the time, had recognized the talents that, you know, while yeah. this girl was doing stuff. Wow. Because I was just trying to just get myself everywhere and mm. anywhere. And they're like, we want to give you this project, this program. And that was a $50 million project that time. Wow. And I ran it and ran it successfully. And then they promoted me to director. That's crazy. Yeah. 50 million. Were you stressed at the time? Very stressed. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy. Especially because you don't have your family around, etc. Yeah. Like, yeah. Times you'll be up at night. And I was. Four years as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. That's a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice. But yeah. the sacrifice paid off. And yeah. sometimes you have to sacrifice. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, so so you got promoted to director. How were you feeling at this point in time? Do you know what? I felt like I can do anything at <laughs> yeah. that time. But you don't realise that the ladder just keeps going up and up and up. So <laughs> it doesn't like, stop. It's stop. like you're not stopping so working. Like, there's still more to be done. And um, that's actually when I realised that, how am I going to be able to get to the next level? And that's actually when I decided I'm going to take, um, I need to study. I need to go back into to study. So yeah. I actually... Um, long you got story to direct short. and you thought, let me go and study. Yeah, because Why? you realize the ladder just keeps going. Well, what's that? What was the next level? Actually, executive director and then MD. Yeah. So two two levels away. Yeah, but only twenty seven. Yeah, though. but it felt like they were miles away. Okay. You know, and yeah. to accelerate that, I was like, yeah. what can I do? Okay. I, there's some tools in my toolbox that yeah. I haven't used. So there's some yeah. tools in my toolbox that I don't even know about. Yeah. I need to try and get those tools. Yeah. And that meant me going back. And I really, one of my dreams, right? I told you about how I got three A's at A levels mm. and then going to Brunel, I then realized that maybe I still, I could have gone to yeah. a top university. So mm -hmm. I still had that in the back of my mind. I was like, in my life, I still want to be able to experience a top university. Yeah. So that was my chance, mm. right? So I thought, let me go and do an MBA. Okay. And wow. um, 
at the time, I think I just won an award with like Black British Business Awards. Mm -hmm. And I used that to my advantage. I, I, I made sure that people in the company saw that. Yeah. And I think one of the MDs picked it up and they were like, oh, I would like to mentor you. So they mentored me and I used that as opportunity to get the support to do an MBA. Okay. And they managed to give me, um, at first when I went for my business, I went like, I applied to Oxford. Um, Oxford was the university I wanted to go to. In fact, mm-hmm. I wanted to go to Harvard, but Harvard didn't do any part-time courses. Right, okay. So I ended up going to Oxford. Mm-hmm. Um, at Oxford at the time, we're doing you know, in the, pretty well in the rankings for executive programs. And they didn't, they offered an executive MBA program. Mm-hmm. And that's a hundred grand course. There was no way I was gonna pay, be able to pay that. Hundred k, and that's just the course. Not even the living expenses. Yeah. You have to go and stay there on campus, and you have to travel around the world. So were you off work for the whole year? Nah. So this is where the negotiation started. Yeah. I had to negotiate with work a the money. Yeah. B the study time. Yeah. And yeah, so I managed to get like a week off every month to okay. go and study at Oxford. So I did that, and then yeah, so. The, the mentor helped me, mm-hmm. like they funded the course yeah. for me and um, from UBS and then went to Oxford, studied there for two years and one of the best experiences I've ever had. I was going to ask you if it was worth it, but you just said it's one of the best yeah, experiences. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I applied to, one of the reasons why I applied to Oxford was yeah. because of the reasons I told you, but yeah. the core reason as a Ghanaian, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the same for Nigerians, but mm-hmm. as, a, as a Ghanaian, naturally you're taught, naturally you're taught not to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Like you're taught, if, if your mum says the sky is red, you just <laughs> accept the sky is red. Yeah. You don't t- talk back. You don't mm. answer back. Mm. So naturally, you find that Ghanaians are quite timid and shy. Mm-hmm. And I was beginning to see that for me as a hindrance. Right, I was beginning to see when I was going into the work environment that I wasn't asking questions. Everybody else was asking questions. But what about me? Why? And that was one of my reasons. I wanted to learn how to ask better questions. Okay. And going to Oxford taught me that. Wow. Yeah. Really? Okay, talk me through this experience at Oxford because I've never been to Oxford, right? Mm. What, 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 describe describe some of your best moments there. Describe some of your most challenging moments there. Most challenging moments was first week going into a class. They're talking about God knows what. And I had no idea what they're talking about. Went back home, to went back to the dormitory and cried. I was like, God, why am I here? Because really? I had no idea. Mm. The words were going over my head. I, I couldn't fathom the concept. I think they were talking about business operations or something. Something mm. that in like naturally sounds simple, but it was overly conceptualized and, mm. and a lot of theory. And I, I, I believe there was like a debate where they were talking about should society become like the difference between a social society and capitalist society or whatever okay. it may be. Okay. And it was deep. Yeah. It was very deep. Like there was at Oxford, there's like the Oxford Union and they there was like a debate where you had to pick a side and pick whether or not society derives value from uh, whatever it was. I can't mm. remember, yeah. but it went over my head. Yeah. And I went back to the dorm and I cried. And I was like, literally, why am I, am I, am I good enough to be here? Mm. And at the time I was one of the youngest in the class because the average age for that executive program was like 40. Wow. And um, because it was an exec MBA program. Mm. And I just was speaking to God. I was like, why am I here? And God just reassured me, Lorraine, just keep going, Mm. keep going, keep going. Right. So that was one of my challenges, most challenging moments. But, you know, turning like the most exciting moments was a I did a startup. So I managed to Mm. um, work with a couple of other of my classmates to to start a business together um, we traveled the world, going to Silicon Valley, seeing Google offices, meeting Reed Hoffman from LinkedIn, wow. like just going to South Africa, going to China, going to India. Like mm. we went literally across the world wow. with this course. And it was just incredible meeting like some of the world's most curious minds. Mm. And that for me it was the best thing that I took out of Oxford was the ability to just connect, to have friends, yeah. to to just deepen my thinking mm-hmm. and understanding for the world wow that's crazy sounds it sounds epic sounds like you got a lot out of it and mm-hmm. you got a lot of growth i'm trying to wonder i'm wondering like how you did this how you worked at ubs and how you Mate, the side hustles but what, something something, what was going gave, on? something gave in the end i remember yeah. finishing at oxford yeah. i went back to ubs mm. and my performance review they gave me like a one 
I was so angry. What's I was a one fuming. That, a one, like, there's a scale of, like, yeah. one to five. Okay. Like, where five is, like, exceeded expectations. Mm. Like, four was, like, mm, um, expectation, or something, like, mm. ex- exceeded, but just above. Yeah. And then it was, like, met expectations at three. And, like, two is below expectation. And then one is just basically failed. Like, every year, they just, they have to, like... Ones basically didn't work basically right so i was fuming i was fuming i was like so i was so upset mm. i actually like to the point that i took it to hr i was like like how do you expect me to do an executive mba program and do this at work at the same mm. time right but unfortunately something had to give yeah so I had, something had to give mm. and um it ended up being my work performance yeah yeah gosh and your side hustles you, you, were you doing any other side hustles at this point or was that, yeah i mean yeah um UGCY was still running. Yeah, that was still um, running. UGCY evolved into a talent agency yeah. where we were supplying talent, music talent to X Factor, Britain's Got Talent, The Voice, mm-hmm. and other um, clients as well. But then out of uni, out of Oxford, was birthed another side hustle mm. called Voxter, okay. which um, sadly no longer is there. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we raised... Voxter is, mm. was <laughs> mm-hmm. a um, music app Okay. That um, I built with four other co-founders mm-hmm. from Oxford. Um, we had raised a six-figure seed investment. Okay. Um, and the app was launched around the same time that um, TikTok took over Musically. And we were trying okay. to do similar... Th- I think it was called Musically those times. I can't remember. Yeah. And we were trying to do similar things, like mm. challenges, things like that. And just the competition was just... Was it insane? Yeah. Who, insane. who else was the competition apart from TikTok? Um... TikTok was a main, but there was another one that was launched around that time, that, mm. which is also no longer, because I think a lot of people just got mm. like sucked out because of TikTok. But mm. another one that Usher was like leading at the time, I can't remember what it's called, but very similar to what we were trying to do as well. Wow. So at the time, it was just that TikTok was blowing up. Mm. So it just blew us out of the water. And unfortunately, wow. we just couldn't sustain it. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Do you know what? Yeah. It's the first thing that I've done that has actually failed, mm. like seriously failed. Mm. Um, and it was, it was hard because a lot of, our my friends had invested. Okay. We raised a lot of money Yeah. from friends, from family, and they had put their hard earned money behind us. Mm. And typically in the investment world, they typically say stuff like they back the jockeys, not the horse. Mm. So meaning they're backing you as a person mm-hmm. as opposed to the idea. Cause ideas can come and go, but you as a person, you can then help to pivot the yeah. idea and things like that. And so I felt bad that people had invested in me mm-hmm. and believed. And I, would you know, given them all I could possibly give in the company. And I just felt disappointed myself. And mm. I felt disappointed in our investors, like yeah. disappointed for my investors who mm. had really um, backed us. Yeah. Um, and we put in everything we possibly could. Yeah. But I think what, what I learned from it um was more than I could have ever, you know, yeah. from from that experience. Yeah, they say that you learn more from your failures than I guess your successes, right? Because mm. you you learn, okay, this went wrong. Okay, I can do this next time. And you know what, business is tough. That's right. <laughs> it's yeah. tough. Yeah. Like, look at TikTok. TikTok is even giving Facebook, mm. which we're going to talk about <laughs> soon. We don't talk about a problem. We don't talk about those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're giving them a, even a problem. They're giving everybody, yeah. YouTube, everybody yeah. a problem. YouTube introduced shorts. Yeah. Uh, Instagram is, intru- they're yeah. giving everybody. So, you know, even the big the guys yeah. are, oh my God, what's this, yeah. you know, new thing. So mm. business is hard. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Okay. So, so you, you started that and then you, at some point you got into meta. What, where, how did that happen? Like what was happening there? Was it because yeah. of the one that you were like, yeah, I'm out of here? No, it was, it was <laughs> okay. shortly after that. So okay. um, cool. I was getting bored after some time. Like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bored of being a director. I was right? bored because, yeah. as I said, there was still a ladder to take, mm. right? There was still a ladder. And I wasn't progressing up that ladder as fast as I wanted to. Okay. And um, there happened to be like some kind of org restructuring and it meant that I was even set back even further from where I wanted to go. Mm. And that just naturally just helped me to just say, look, I'm going for, I'm going somewhere else. And also mm. I felt like I wasn't doing what I was passionate about. Yeah. Okay. 
And so I came across this job opportunity at Meta, which was around community partnerships mm -hmm. and I applied for it and I'm here at Meta now. Yeah. yeah. What, what is that? What does that job community partnerships entail? Yeah, so I work with a lot of Facebook groups okay. um, who are doing impactful things in their communities. Okay. And I am their partner manager, what's called a strategic partner manager, mm. um, where I'm leading a accelerated program in the UK for yeah. these partners mm -hmm. to help them further their impact, mm -hmm. right? So to turn the ideas they might have into more impactful ideas. Okay, mad. Mm. I think I saw something, I'm trying to remember, you, you took a pay cut. Is that true? That you I took a pay, pay cut, cut to come to Meta, uh, but you were also doing your side hustle yeah. to give you more time. Yeah, exactly. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, mm. we were talking earlier on about sacrifice, mm. right? Yeah. And for me, I got to a point where, look, it was now or never, mm. right? I'm going to try and work on the side hustles and also yeah. just have time for myself. Like yeah. when self care was just becoming mm. big, I was like, yeah, I want to care for myself, mm. you know? So I took a pay cut. I. Um, did less hours at UBS. Mm. I became part a part timer. I spent mm. more time in Ghana. Wait, you part time um, at Mel? At U not now. Okay, at UBS. but that was my time at UBS. Okay. To at UBS, I was part time. Okay. Um, I evolved. I moved into a part time role. Wow. Um, and that just gave me more time to work on yeah. other things and mm. also just find myself. Mm. Right. Know who am I? Yeah. What is it that I actually want to achieve? Mm. What do I? What What impact do I want to leave on this world? Mm. And I think it it you know because i was just going and going and going i didn't mm. have that time to sit back and think mm. i think having that time to sit back and think helped me to then carve out where i am today yeah 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 you know what's crazy right like i was just thinking about it like you you're so go you were so go you went 27 director boom mm. right it, f it feels almost like you're okay with slowing down a little bit now i am yeah yeah i think you know in my 20s it mm. was go 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 do yeah. everything but now in my 30s yeah like it's now i'm honing into some of those things mm. and honing into what is it and taking my time and i mean it could be the other way around some yeah. people will be like take your time take your time in 20s <laughs> and now it's like you know yeah but i've done it the other way around i worked hard in my 20s mm. like very hard and now i'm doing what i want to do mm -hmm. i'm trying to do what's what what i feel is my passion yeah you know so that's kind of where i'm at Right yeah. Now. So in Ghana, you've got the nail salon, you've got the agrotech startup. Agrotech. Yeah. That, this is people investing. Yeah. So it's in, called. Gro it's a company yeah. called Grow for Me. Yeah. And Grow for Me, what they do essentially, we work mm. with smallholder farmers across mm -hmm. Ghana, and we allow for anybody, like mainly mm. a lot of people in the diaspora, mm. that maybe don't know how to get involved in farming. And we yeah. basically do it for you. Okay. So you might have some money, mm. and you you don't know how to get involved in farming, but you want to. We will put. It's a crowdfunding opportunity mm. for you to invest into farmers who okay. will then grow on your behalf and at the end of it we will then trade those commodities mm. and then generate a return mm. um for you and that's 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 how it works wow and then you're also obviously you've got the talent agency and then you're doing you're on real estate as well property as well yeah so i'm some, an agent for two companies in ghana yeah. one's called white wall properties mm -hmm. Um, and another one's called Mocha Living. And Mocha mm. Living basically do real estate construction mm. um, projects for people that want to do real estate mm. developments or um, renovations. How do you have the time to do this? Yeah. D sleep D is... It, <laughs> okay, wow. Well, <laughs> you're no, like my friend. No, I, I, I interviewed my friend like a couple um, about a month ago, right? Mm. And I was asking how many hours do you sleep? I think it's a few hours. So well, how many hours do you sleep? You know you what? Sleep? To, be, to be honest, I actually yeah. love sleep. Anyone that knows do you, me do you knows actually love sleep? I love sleep. Okay. Like, wow, I'm, 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 that friend that, I'm that friend that, you know, when you go to a restaurant yeah. and you finish eating, I'm the one yeah. that's just like, like <laughs> those, those off. That's me. Like anywhere I get, I can doze off. Like yeah. I'm, I'm thankful to God that I've got that, that, that gift of sleep. So you could just <laughs> sleep anywhere. anywhere. So in between places, you sleep. <laughs> Like, nah, but um, uh, I try and maximize my hours mm. outside of work. Okay. So I try and maximize like that five to nine, that five yeah. to nine in the morning mm. and that five to nine in the evening. Okay. Right. Those are the times I try and maximize because yeah. adding those together is basically a whole other day. That's true. You know? That's very true. So yeah. I try and maximize that and use that for my side hustles. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I use to try and execute. Yeah. Wow. It's tough. Mm. <laughs> that is yeah. tough. Yeah. Do you, I, I, I was talking with someone about this. Do you like, do you feel like at some point, do you feel like this is what you'll keep on doing or do you feel like you'll drop something? Do you feel like you're getting there or do you think you'll pick something more? 
back up? I'm I'm naturally the kind of person that I like to get involved in different things. Yeah. So if I see something I'm interested in, I go for it. Okay. So I can't sit here and tell you that I ain't going to pick up something else because okay. I can see something and I'm going to be like, wow, I want to work on that. Really? You know, like, or maybe I see opportunity. I'm, like, I'm the kind of person, I'm an ideas person yeah. and I like to see opportunities yeah. and, and, and try and go for it. Yeah. Um. So I do think there will be value in me streamlining things eventually. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um. But who's who's to say that there could be something else that comes up that I'm just interested in and just want to pursue? Yeah, yeah I'm like that as well. But I think mm. I, I've just restrained myself now. Otherwise, I'll do yeah. anything. I'm interested in too many things. But then, so. what I've learned to do now yeah. is I'm at the point where now if it's not going to bring me any value yeah. or monetary return. Then mm. I'm not going to do You're it. Just not going to yeah. do it. Okay. And but it's it's impact, value, and monetary return. Yeah. But if it's like, oh, I'm just going to see if it's going to work. Mm. Blah, 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 no. You just don't do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, mad, mad. Do do you do you still have time for fun in all of this? <laughs> serious question. Serious yeah. question. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. Your your fun is traveling though. Obviously. I enjoy traveling. Yeah. Um, I enjoy sleep. <laughs> I have. Somebody will say that you right, don't on this. On right. the, if they're listening to this, I have a guilty pleasure. I watch EastEnders. EastEnders like, is your right. thing. Yeah. Is that yeah. even still going? It's still, everybody asks me that. Is it still going? Yes, it is. And okay. Janine <laughs> just fell down some stairs and she's going to oh. lose a baby. And like <laughs> Alfie's back in EastEnders. Nah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I think I would watch um, EastEnders during Christmas. That's the only time I watch it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. But um, fun. I mean, look, catch up with friends, socializing. Yeah. Ghana is a place to have fun as yeah. well. So, yeah, when I'm in London, it's just a time to reconnect with people. Mm-hmm. And go for dinners, lunches, yeah. meetups, etc. Cool. And how how is the Ghana thing happening with, with you? Is the meta role? Is that like mm, good question? <laughs> yeah, because I, I know a lot of people want to do. Yeah, the two, yeah. It's, it's more challenging now. Yeah. I'll be very honest with you. Okay, it's more that? challenging because meta. My role, even though my my role is hybrid, mm. um, my partners are UK based. Okay, so I have to wow. be like the partners. My job is mm. UK based job. Okay, you know. Um, but who knows? Who knows what can mm. happen in the future, right? Yeah. Um, but the good thing is that they do have, a, you know, part of their yeah. um, their policies are that we're allowed to work, you know, in another country for a period of time. So yeah. I've got the opportunity to do that as well. Okay, cool. That sounds good. I mean, Met is a worldwide company, so I can imagine they'll support you on what, what you need mm-hmm. to do. Um, what would you say has been your biggest challenges with in terms of like, mm. you know, managing the side hustles and in, in, in your career? I mean, one of the biggest challenges is like, look, when you're unable to become full time on something, you know, the time it becomes like a time value of money. So mm. I believe that happened with my Voxter. So the, the app, um, you're going to speak to loads of them. You speak to investors and investors are asking you full time. Mm. Do you I, and we're not full time because mm. we're doing our jobs and we're yeah. doing side hustles. So one of the biggest challenges are the things I want to push further. I can't push it further because the very nature of me having other side hustles, Mm -hmm. right? So it's a sacrifice me doing different side hustles because it means that somebody might look at me and say, she's not full time on that thing, Mm -hmm. right? And they wouldn't invest. And that is literally the reality of some things. And that's a huge challenge. Second challenge could be, you know, because I've got things going up in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Can I trust, you know, the people that are running my businesses in Ghana? You know, so... There's a whole lot of challenges, but that's where I need to now make sure that I put in the right governance and structures yeah. to make sure those things are operating irrespective yeah. of where I am. How do you I do am. that in Ghana? Because I need to learn this for Nigeria, to be honest, like I'm being honest with you. It's, it's tough. You yeah. need to, um, so I have a partner um, okay. in Ghana who mm. um, she's locally based. Okay. So making sure that, you know, there's somebody on the ground all the time. Okay. Um, making sure you put in the right system so there's accountability mm-hmm. so if money needs to go somewhere you can track and trace who's the one that put that into that place or okay you know and just having the right systems in place yeah wow mm. wow wow that's good mm. you thought of everything <laughs> we're still you know i'm not there yeah. yet by yeah. any means yeah i'm not anywhere close to yeah. where i want to be right now w- where do you want to be with it <laughs> we spoke about this <laughs> to, to no, that, but that's my goal that's my goal what's your goal <laughs> god knows my goal god, god knows i want to be writing well, okay, i want to be writing checks okay. freely with you don't want to you don't want to manifest it <laughs> i'll be writing checks freely okay. like that with plenty freely. zeros yeah and then not getting bounced okay, okay. 
that's where we're fair enough, to. fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I wish you luck. I think, I think, I think definitely I can see that you, you know, your mindset is in the right place. And I think it's just one of those things where it's just patience. I think mm. a lot of these things take time, right? That's right? You just need time to, um, for it to mature. And I think Ghana is still a growing economy. Absolutely. I feel like there's, yeah. it, there's huge growth potential. Yeah. What would you say some of like, like the areas that you feel like you see growing the most. I know like a lot of people are looking at real estate, like one of my friends, God, he'll show me like a really nice area mm. in real estate. Is that the main thing that's happening there? There's a there few or? things right now. So it's a great question. I think real estate definitely is one. Yeah. Um, the challenge right now is a decline in city rate. So if you're okay. investing, a foreign investor is going to have a field day. Absolutely. Mm. But when you're looking at your return, you need to consider that. So if you're okay. doing it for investment purposes and you're looking at, okay, what your yields may be, maybe mm. because someone's coming to rent, unless you're charging in a major f foreign currency mm -hmm. and you're charging in the local currency, then you're going to get burnt because really? the city is currently declining. Okay. Um, so, and technically by law, you're not actually meant to charge in a foreign currency other than the city. Okay. But there are people that are charging in dollars, right? Mm. To try and maintain the value of their investment. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's actually against the law in Ghana. But hey, um, so hmm. real estate is one of them. Okay. Um, another one is um, there was a lot going on in the agriculture space mm -hmm. during COVID when, you know, a lot of economies, um, GDPs were declining. Mm -hmm. When you look at Ghana, whose GDP was also on the decline, the proportion of agriculture in which it took up mm. in the GDP was actually growing. Mm -hmm. So GDP, the, the agriculture areas booming it's considered the green gold yeah so it's definitely an area that people should get involved in mm -hmm. in, in in ghana um if they are considering going there um and there's a lot of different things mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of different things that are going yeah. on there okay yeah. i've got a question for you actually what 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 are you worried about the most in life right now <laughs> have you thought about that or are you just too busy that's a random question it is a random wow. question i'm a christian and the yeah. bible says do not be anxious <laughs> for anything <laughs> um in in my daily worries are just being able to make an impact mm -hmm. and be able to derive the value that I feel I deserve. Like mm -hmm. to be recognized for yeah. delivering a certain level of value okay. and also just being able to achieve faster growth with a lot of things that I'm doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I, I know the reason why I asked that. I mean, for me, it's, I think that's... We're, we're always worrying about the next thing. Yeah. We're never sometimes satisfied with what we've done. Yeah. We're always worried, especially when you're a driven person. Yeah. I've realized that. I'm like, wait, hold on. Why am I not just enjoying what I've yeah. done? I'm always thinking, what's next? What's next? Yeah. What's next? Okay, let me worry that's about that. Naturally. Have I done that? Have I done that? Yeah, that's right? me naturally. Even yeah. at work, when I start, I, I'm, I'm new at Meta. Yeah. I'm thinking like, how am I going to get to the next day? Like, that's literally. Really? Because I'm always thinking, yeah. what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Yeah. How am I going to get there? How am I, yeah. Who do I need to speak to? How do I need, like, that's me naturally. I can't yeah. help it. Yeah. You know, so. It's a drive, right? In yeah. You, right. Just to get to the next step. Mm. But I guess it's important for you to. Everybody should have a drive, it. right? But yeah. I think we need to get to a point. Look, we live in a society right now where it's a microwave society. Everybody wants everything instantaneously, mm -hmm. right? And none of us, and I think you said something earlier, right? Mm. It's just about being patient. Mm. And I think I've learned that I need to be patient. Mm -hmm. And. A lot of people are seeing people right now and they feel like people getting things overnight. There are there are people getting overnight success, but mm -hmm. majority of people, it takes time, mm -hmm. you know? And I think I'm coming to terms with the fa fact that everything I'm getting right now is just a build up mm -hmm. to that success, you know? Yeah, but you've achieved a lot though. Like Not crazy, man. What do you mean? You got an MBE? Oh yeah, we're going to talk about it. You got an MBE as well. Like, are you serious? <laughs> like, you know what? When I yeah. look at my life, I remember speaking to someone about this. I think of my life on a spectrum, yeah. right? Like zero to 10. Yeah. Imagine zero to 10. Yeah. And there were times when I weren't sharing my story. Yeah. And I weren't sharing like, mm. because I felt like I'm not there yet. Let's mm. say 10 mm -hmm. was where there is. Yeah. Right. I still feel like I'm on one and two. Yeah. You know, and people are like, no, Lorraine, even at that one and two, your one and two is somebody's 10. Yeah. You know? So share. Yeah. And that's when I started, like, yeah. you know, sharing my story. Mm -hmm. But still, I feel like there's a long way to go. But then that's the peak. That's the that's the end, right? Is there an end? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. No, because you have a legacy, right? But the yeah. 10, the 10, okay, let's say beyond 10, 11, 12. And the right? 10 moves. That is. The 10 moves. Exactly. It keeps moving. Yeah, it's never a 10. Yeah. It's just 100 or yeah. 1,000 or a million or whatever. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, you've done a lot. You've done a lot. You've achieved a lot. So you should be very, very proud of your successes for sure. Um, I think it's 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 nice. It's refreshing as well to always want to be the best. Is that Ronaldo right now? Like what's happening mm. with him, right? He he can't accept where he's at. He can't, he can't accept he's here. He used to be there, but he's he here. Can't. I mean, he's yeah. now um, the first player yeah. to score in five World Cups. And I was calculating. I was like, World Cups are like four years apart. Yeah. I'm like, how did you, when did you start to like be able to like. He's that driven. He's super, super driven. And it's always nice to, you know, obviously see people like that. But you also got to enjoy. But I'm not Ronaldo. I need, <laughs> no, no, you're not I need, Ronaldo, I need yeah. Ronaldo money. <laughs> Soon, soon, soon. Amen, it'll come, amen, it'll come, amen. it'll come. Okay, so you, um, so you got MBE. What was the, what was the MBE for? So I got MBE for yeah. University Gospel Choir of the Year. Okay. The work we've been doing in the community, working yeah. with young people. Um, so it was just a testament to the the long service that we've done, the thousands of students that have come through our doors, the you know hundreds of lives that we've impacted, thousands of lives that we've impacted, right? And just to be recognised for that was just yeah. amazing for me. Talk me through the call. How how did it happen? Was it a call? Was it a text? Was it? A, it was a letter. A letter. A letter. Yeah, okay. A letter. a letter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But um, look, it wasn't. I was happy. Okay. But mm -hmm. this could sound controversial, but I deserve mm. this. <laughs> okay. Cool. You know because. And the, the thing about this is, is there's, there's some people in my community. When I talk about mm -hmm. my community, I'm talking about the Ghanaian community that I've seen go ahead of me. And because they have been a representation for me and they look like me, naturally I feel like, wow, if they can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So when you get to a point where you're doing similar things mm -hmm. and you are showing, because the MBE, CBEs, knighthoods, all of that mm -hmm. are recognizing people that have done things over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so when you believe that you've done impact over a long period of time, then why should you not deserve to yeah. be that, to be recognized, yeah. right? So at one point I was like, yeah, I'm grateful to God. I'm humbled, I'm privileged, but I also deserve this, mm -hmm. you know? Fair enough, yeah. 10 years deep, of That's course, it. of course you deserve yeah. it. Love that, love that. Okay, there you go. You patted yourself on the back <laughs> once. Um, wow, that's, that's, that's so crazy. Um, what would you say has been your biggest success? The MBE, the MBE yeah. to be recognised, yeah, yeah, that's that's been my 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 peak. Yeah. yeah. What, what, so so obviously you met the Queen, right? I'm I met assuming. the Queen not through the MBE. Okay. I met the the late Her Majesty the Queen. Yeah. Um, back in I think 2019 okay. or 18, mm. they were recognising people in the community that were. I think they just invited us to Buckingham Palace, and okay. I was one of them picked. Okay. Um, and I went and I met the Queen and the now King and the wife. What's the wife called the queen now, or what's yeah. she called? I, I guess so, yeah. I yeah, her. Yeah. Her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, for my MBE, I was presented, I was decorated with an MBE by uh, Princess Anne. Oh, wow. That's yeah. nice. What was it like meeting them? Yeah. I mean, my mum was more excited than I was, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, back in the palace, yeah. yeah. I know, right? <laughs> like it was at Windsor, yeah, yeah. Windsor Castle, but yeah, Man. it was it was, it was, was an experience. It's a once in a lifetime yeah. experience. So wow, wow. It's, it's you never know, you might get a CBE. Amen so then to it that. might not be Amen a once in a life, yeah. might be a Amen. second in a life experience. Amen that is that. crazy. I was wondering if we could give some tips to people about starting side hustles because mm. obviously in this environment, um, you know. Mm. Having one source of income yeah. in this environment yeah. may, it's a bit dangerous, let's say, you know, obviously you're battling cost of living crisis, inflation, etc. And I know a lot of people want to make an additional income. So do you have like any sort of, I guess, quick grab side hustle that people could yeah, sort I of think, look at and they could start today? I think nowadays it's all about working smarter, not mm. harder, right? So looking at things that maybe somebody else has built and you take in using your network to take it to the next level. So especially for those people, I've spoken a lot about Ghana, right? Those people that maybe um, you don't want to start up a full business in Ghana, but yeah. maybe you've seen an amazing product in Ghana. Yeah. Maybe it's a food product. Maybe it's an electronic business, whatever it may be. Reach out to them and say, can you be an agent or a distributor for them? Right. It means that you don't have to do the product work, but you can do the distribution work. Yeah. Right, and it means your startup costs aren't as high as it would have been to come up with a product. I've done that myself, yeah. right? You can just start doing that. And you then package yourself up as an agent or distributor and it's just a quick win, yeah. you know? 
Secondly, nowadays, especially because I'm working at Meta, I'm seeing a big boom in areas of community management. Mm -hmm. Whether it's physical, whether it's online, it's a huge area right now. And I tell you, it's, it's, it's a huge area. So communities are a big thing. Whatever you do, maybe you've got a community at home because you're, a, you're part of a parent society, whatever it may mm -hmm. be, or just manage that community, but try and monetize from it somehow, mm -hmm. right? There are now Facebook groups that are able to monetize yeah. because they've got a large community of people mm -hmm. and brands need to attract those people. So just man building a community of people that have shared interests, yeah. it's an easy win and it's a mm. quick win. Yeah. And of course you've got creators, you've got a num you know, there's a number of different side hustles that people can get involved in, whether yeah. it's investments, whether it's crypto, whether it's voiceover artists, yeah. becoming a freelancer yeah. on Fiverr. There's so many different things. There's lots, there's lots to definitely get involved in. Um, I think I was speaking to, yeah, I was speaking to somebody on the podcast a few weeks ago. We were talking about um, video editors for podcasts. Mm. I've been reached out by so many people oh, wanting real? to, yeah, to offer to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they see this, it on TikTok and yeah. yeah, can we can we do it for you? Da, da, da. So many. Do you see? It's and crazy. people are like, and there's other things. People might have some spare space in their house and yeah. just do a podcast studio right yeah. so there's so many different things nowadays that people can get involved in yeah uh, there's almost no excuses there to be able there to isn't. There isn't. you know it's, yeah it's crazy now it's been so good good uh speaking to you what what do you have planned next for yourself yeah so um 2023 um there's a few things coming out myself and um you must know the e-man from the e-man yep. effect yeah uh, myself and him are going to be collaborating on a side hustle boot camp okay so, oh wow uh, those cool. people that want to just find out more about mm -hmm. how they can run side hustle successfully it's alongside their full-time job mm -hmm. we're going to be running a program okay. so people can get in touch with us to sign up and then yeah we'll be leading you through you want to give the, uh, the details are yet? not out yet okay, but they can follow myself yeah. on social media okay. on ig lorraine at, at lorraine h right yeah or the e-man effect and the moment that information comes out, you'll see it. Cool. And uh, so your socials, Instagram, are you on Twitter as well? Everything is Lorraine H. Right. Yeah, Even TikTok? TikTok. As well. Even TikTok. Okay, you're on TikTok. Across okay, all yeah, platforms. On everything. That's epic. That's epic. That sounds cool. I think mm. that's going to be very, very useful next year, especially yeah. for a lot of people. As we mentioned, a lot of people are looking to get into side hustles. Maybe by the time, this episode is coming out in about three weeks. So maybe by that time, if you've got the details, we'll put, we'll put it in the, uh, the description. Cool, that's great. Do you have any final words for the listeners? I think you're right. Like we're living in the cost of living crisis yeah. right now. Um, one of my biggest tips for anybody right now is just never use your age as an excuse. Just get started now. I remember saying when I met Reid Hoffman, one of the things that he said is, and Reid Hoffman is one of the co-founders of LinkedIn. He said, if you're not embarrassed by your first version, you've launched too late. Mm -hmm. And so it hit me because it just was like, if you want to start something, just start now. Don't worry about who's watching yeah. you. Don't worry about how perfect it is. Authenticity is best. Get in and out, make those mistakes and learn from it and move on. Love that. Love that. Epic, epic. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The rain here. Um, yeah, no, it's been great hearing your story. Uh, very, very inspiring. I think you should, I I'm hoping this was inspiring for you to hear. <laughs> listen back. Uh, from where you actually came from um, it's been good it's been mm. you know full of challenges it seems like you've traveled the world you've done all sorts of things and I think what really sticks out to me is like what you said you, you just gave it a go yeah. you just gave it a go you weren't scared to to go out there and try new things or, or sacrifice and I think that's helped you to to grow a lot and yeah we might see you in the billionaire list in Amen. the future and if you are then yeah comment on the podcast yeah. for sure right <laughs> Um, listeners, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Take Up Experience. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs>